What up, Snowflake? I'm Leon, the Paperback Maniac. Season's greetings. I hope you've been having a merry month and enjoying uh, this holiday season. Uh, I am officially on winter break as of yesterday and uh, couldn't be merrier, to tell you the truth. Uh, definitely, I'm looking forward to uh, two weeks of a little R&R, &R, uh, you know, catching up on some books, some movies, and all those things that bring me joy. Uh, and of course, as often happens when I'm at loose ends, I've also been doing a fair amount of shopping, uh, book shopping in this case, uh, which is what brings us here today. Uh, today I will be doing part one of my winter, uh, horror book haul. Uh, I guess I decided I'm going to break it up into two separate videos this time. So I'm not here forever. Uh, so yeah, we'll do part one. And these are, uh, some super, uh, nice uh, gems that I found, uh, some of which, uh, many of which I found in the old brick and mortar and, and some of which I found online. And um, speaking of online, I guess I'll start with uh, a thing that I recently got in the mail, which is the uh, most recent uh, edition of Fangoria magazine, uh, the, the new, the newly reissued Fangoria. This is uh, volume two, uh, issue number six. And I've uh, kind of been enjoying uh, diving into this like the last couple of days, you know, just reading you know, an article here and there. Um, uh, yeah, it's enjoying it, really fun. If you, uh, you know, are a Fango fan and you haven't gotten on the new one, check it out, check it out. Unfortunately, it's not, uh, you cannot find them at uh, chain bookstores as you could back in the day. I think you do have to, to order them from the website. But um, yeah, you know, I think if you're a fan, uh, definitely worth it. Um, so, all right, getting into the books. So uh, we're going to start uh, with some books from across the pond. Uh, shout out to my homies uh, over in the UK. Uh, and we're going to start with uh, an author who was completely new to me. I never heard of this guy before, uh, and, and nor had I heard of any of these books. Uh, so this is um, Ian Watson uh, is the author. And the first one we're looking at is Meat uh, and just... Take a moment to relish that uh, amazing cover. <laughs> what 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 a cover, uh, right? Like that's how the UK uh, did it, and I always appreciate that. Um, this book was published by Headline. In fact, all I think, yeah, a few of the all four or five of these are uh, Headline editions, and this came out in 1988. Uh, as I said, I've never heard of this thing before. But uh, if anyone is hip to Ian Watson and uh, knows about him, uh, drop a line. Let me know. You know what I'm in for. Looks definitely uh, intriguing from the cover there. All right, and then the uh, second Ian Watson book I've got is The Power, uh, with just some amazing, uh, looks like photograph art there, uh, and uh, you know, just love that lighting. I just love that. You know that 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 trope of the, you know, the hand, splayed hand emerging uh, from the ground. It's just amazing. Um, this one was published by Headline in 1987. Yeah, and um, or it looks like, is it emerging from a lake or something? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, really cool, yeah, these were both uh, completely new to me. I love that I'm still discovering, you know, these vintage uh, UK horror paperbacks. Always happy to add more. To the collection. Another guy uh, that I recently discovered, never heard of this guy, never heard of these books, uh, is Philip Cavani. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, uh, but the first uh, book we're looking at is 1999, and this one was published by Headline. Uh, this paperback edition came out in 1998. Looks like it was first published in 1997. But just look how uh, that is. Look how awesome that cover is for 1998. Uh, definitely, the UK guys were were you know hanging in there and, and still producing uh, laudable uh, cover art uh, in the up to the late 90s. Um, I know like Leisure and had like definitely kind of dropped off by this point. But uh, yeah, that looks really cool. This this one sounds intriguing. It has to do obviously you know like with the with the millennium with the new millennium and then. Um, Let's see, I'll, I'll read the synopsis uh, for this one. It says, uh, Manchester approaching the millennium is a city coming apart at the seams. Infested with ragmen, the growing army of the homeless, and terrorized by violent crime, it's also succumbing to the delights of Warp, a new designer hallucinogenic with horrific side effects. When ex-cop Will Ambrose's son, Martin, dies after taking the drug, Ambrose is determined to discover who controls its supply. Taking his life in his hands, he enters the world of the ragmen, who peddle warp on the streets, and finds himself sucked into a lawless, brutal society. But the domain of the ragmen conceals an even more terrifying reality, 
And soon, Will is on a bad trip that leads down into the sewers, where a whole new level of horror awaits him as a bizarre cult pre pre prepares for its final sacrifice. <laughs> that uh, sounds a little politically incorrect, but sounds amazing. Uh, kind of getting shades from uh, of John Shirley's uh, Cellars there. So um, yeah, that sounds fun. Really happy to uh, discover this dude. And then um, the other book I got from that I ordered from Philip Cavney, uh, uh, Cavney or Cavney, whatever, is a uh, Bad to the Bone. And this one was published by Headline in a, uh, this edition came out in 1997. Uh, looks like it was first published in 1996. Uh, and it appears to be heavy metal horror, which is awesome. Uh, maybe, you know, a little, could be a little similar to uh, Skip Inspector's The Scream, possibly. I don't know, but um, that's that's also a cool, you know, for, ni for 1997, um, pretty cool, pretty cool artwork. And uh, yeah, this, this definitely also uh, looks pretty uh, fun and intriguing. All right, and then uh, the last one is actually not a UK title. Um, it's it's an American author and book, but it's a UK edition. This uh, right here is the headline edition of Dan Simmons' first novel, Song of Cali. And uh, this headline edition uh, was published in uh, 1987. And uh, yeah, I, I went with the headline because, you know, as is usual the case, I, I prefer these UK editions uh, to the American counterparts. And Song of Cali is a, a book that I've been uh, curious about for, for a very long time. Um, it's, it, sounds, it sounds really cool. Um, I, I've read uh, some Dan Simmons sci-fi. I have actually not read any of his horror fiction. I actually have a, a horror, a Dan Simmons horror book. I think I'm, it's, part of my next batch uh, for uh, so look out for that in part two but um, yeah I read uh, Hyperion uh, from by Dan Simmons and then its sequel uh, what was it Endymion um, they were really really good uh, he's a super talented writer um, I don't know about like him as a, like personally <laughs> like how you know likable of a guy he is but um, yeah he's a great very talented writer when it comes to science fiction and I've heard uh, that he's equally good uh, when it comes to to horror I know like you know Stephen King had raved about uh, Summer of Night, which has, you know, been c compared to It. Uh, that's one that I definitely need to get to as well. But this is his first published book, so he actually started with horror, if I'm not mistaken. And um, it's all about, like, the evil city of Calcutta. And uh, that just, you know, it just sounds really intriguing. I'm sure it's very atmospheric and creepy. So, yeah, happy to, happy to have that one. All right, now back to uh, the U.S. publishers here. Um, we are taking a look next at uh, Phantasma by Thomas F. Monteleone. Uh, I've always been a super uh, big fan of that cover there. Uh, this uh, was published by Tor in uh, June of 1989. And uh, this is apparently one of those like genre mashups. I think this one is uh, like mafia uh, meets supernatural horror which um, is, sounds appealing to me, and I actually kind of like it. I've, I've talked before about my, my fondness for, for genre mashups back in the day, in the 80s in particular, um, and, you know, makes me think of, um, like, like, one that I read before I had this channel that was really good was um, Assassin by Sean Hudson, and that was kind of like a, like a crime, crime novel, like a gritty, violent crime novel meets uh, just over-the-top fucking Richard Lehman-like uh, supernatural horror, and it was really fun, and so, you know... Uh, those can be fun. So hopefully this one will be like a cool little, uh, you know, mafia slash supernatural horror uh, mashup. Thomas F. Monteleone, uh, I is, is a very, you know, re re uh, reputed, highly reputed writer. And for good reason, you know, I've read uh, some stories of, from him and, uh, yeah, definitely uh, looking forward to checking that one out. Okay. And then now, now we're getting into some leisure titles. I uh, got a few more David Robbins books. I, I showed one in my last whole video and then a number of people chimed in and talked about David Robbins and just how funny he is in like a cheesy like 80s 90s way so I uh, went ahead and picked up Spectre uh, this is one I'm pretty sure I've owned in the past but I looked high and low couldn't find it anywhere this is a problem with me I just sometimes uh, I just can't find stuff because I have no system of organization and things are everywhere they could be like uh, you know deep buried deep in that bookcase or they could be like in the many uh, piles and stacks of books in my walk-in closet. But um, so I went ahead and picked it up. This one was published by uh, Leisure in uh, Octo on Octo October 1st, 1988. This is definitely an October writer for Leisure. Um, I don't think this one necessarily has anything specifically to do with, with Halloween. I know most of his books do. Uh, let's take a look at what this one says. 
It says Shadow Slayer. A mound of freshly piled earth trembled fiercely. The sound of desperate clawing grew louder and louder, until finally a hand burst forth, pushing itself into the world like a child from a hellish womb. As silent and insubstantial as a shadow, it had the strength of ten men and butchered its victims with a ferocity and brutality unmatched in history. It had come from beyond the grave, and no one knew how to send it back. Sounds great. Uh, this guy, this guy just seems like total, you know, uh, 80s trope comfort food. You know, it's like putting on a, a, like a comfortable sweater or something. Uh, I love this kind of stuff. It seems really fun. Just cheesy, uh, you know, light, turn your brain off, gruesome fun. So yeah, Spectre, this seem, uh, looks like one of, um, I, I'm really looking forward to that one in particular. Uh, and then uh, the next one from him I picked up is The Whirling. And this one was published also by Leisure uh, in April of 1986. Uh, you know, werewolf horror. Uh, that sounds fun. Um, so yeah, I went and picked that up. And then uh, the third and final David Robbins book I got was a uh, Prank Night. Uh, this is uh, one of his like Halloween uh, horror novels. And uh, this one was published on um, in October of 1994. Of course, yeah. So. Um, yeah, Prank Night, and then uh, the one that I showed last month was Spook Night, and then he's got he's got more. He he wrote a lot of uh, books set on ha Halloween, so yeah, this looks like a fun one to add to the collection. So figured why not? All right, uh, now we're uh, transitioning into Zebra. A couple of Zebra books. Uh, the first one is The Witching, and uh, this was written by. Um, Fritzen Ravenswood. And uh, if anyone knows that author's real name, <laughs> drop a comment below. I'm pretty sure that's a... I, I'm positive that's got to be a pen name. Uh, this person wrote two novels in the early 80s with leisure and then no nothing else. Uh, it's very uh, highly likely that this was just like another writer, maybe like a science fiction or fantasy writer who thought he'd dip his toes or her toes in, into the horror genre. Uh, this one came out in... Um, uh, let's see... 1981 and really cool that really cool like uh, early 80s uh, zebra artwork I dig that and then the other uh, the other book that this person published under that name is The Spawning uh, and this one was also published by Zebra in uh, 1981 did I say I think uh, The Witching was 1980 I don't know if I've messed that up this one is 81 and that's a pretty cool uh, basic cover. Love the what? Love the the dripping blood, and um, yeah, looks pretty, looks pretty fun. You know, very uh, kind of just emblematic of that that period of early '80s horror fiction. Um, and then, okay, another uh, book from Leisure or sorry, Zebra is uh, The Devil's Moon, and this one was written by William M. Carney. And uh, Zebra put this out in July of 1988. Definitely looks like uh, this is, you know, kind of, I guess, post-skeleton phase Zebra. Um, you know, they did a lot of William W. Johnstone covers like this. The only difference is you you might think that that's a die-cut cover, but it's actually not. There is no uh, there is no inner artwork. I was I was shocked. I thought for sure that there was going to be something in there. It looks like it should be one. Perhaps there are, are editions that are. Maybe this one just isn't. I don't know. If uh, if you know that, let me know. If you if you have a copy of this book, but um, yeah, just that that is like classic sort of like late eighties uh, leisure. Um, I wonder if those like it looks like those things should glow in the dark or something. That'd be cool if they did. But uh, yeah, was happy to pick that one up. One that I was not familiar with. Um, and then uh, another leisure book is uh, Sweet Revenge by Gene Simon. And this one was published in um, October of 1991. Kind of going back, I've just kind of been obsessed lately with picking up as many uh, zebra and leisure titles from that kind of like late 80s, early 90s uh, time period, like 90, 91, 92. I don't know, I just like, I, I kind of have a real nostalgia for that for that period. And, you know, so hopefully this one, this one will be will be cool, uh, and then oh, okay, pro probably my favorite cover just because of how ridiculous it is. This is another William M. Carney uh, title. Here we have Hide and Seek, 
And uh, this one was published by Leisure in, um, let me see, I keep losing my place. Uh, this was February of 1991. And uh, yeah, just, I mean, when I saw this thing, just so stupid and ridiculous, it reminds me of like a, like a VHS cover for like a, um, like a full moon, like Charles Band movie from, well, from like around 1991. But uh, yeah, that's just, I thought that was really funny. And, uh, and this one, I believe also the cool thing is uh, it is signed by uh, Bill Carney there. Uh, that's pretty cool. It says, um, it says for Rod, he who teaches writing or speaking less uh, is saying more. And that, so that's, you know, kind of interesting. So this was shortly after the release of the book. Um, yeah, but any, any, any zebra title with a cover like that is going to get my attention. So I had to, had to pick that one up. Okay, just two more here. Uh, the next up, uh, this was one that I had never seen uh, like this edition of. This is The Worms by Al Sarantonio. And uh, this, this edition is uh, from Berkeley. It was published in 1988. Uh, looks like it was first put out by Doubleday in 1985. Uh, Al Sarantonio is another writer who has written many, many uh, Halloween set horror novels. It's kind of like his thing. Uh, this one is one of his earlier. It may even be his first um, published novel. I'm not sure about that. But I don't think this this is not a horror uh, set book. I do have some of his uh, Halloween set books. But um, yeah, this one looks really cool. It actually kind of definitely makes me think of like a UK sort of like animal attack type book from that period. So um, yeah. Was happy to pick that up. Love the colors there. And then, you know, I like to try to save for my homies that stick around till the very end. I, try, I like to save like one of the best ones for last. Usually this time I definitely did that. Uh, <clears throat> the last book we're going to be looking at today is Masks, a novel of terror by Bill uh, Pronzini. And uh, this book was published by Berkeley. Uh, this edition came out in May of 1983. Looks like it was first put out by Arbor House uh, in August of 1981. But uh, yeah, when I saw this thing, I knew I had to have it. Uh, this is apparently a voodoo horror novel uh, set in New, Orle New Orleans. And uh, yeah, that just sounds amazing. Um, really, really excited. Uh, absolutely love Love that kind of, yeah, that early 80s, really creepy uh, kind of imagery there on the cover. So, uh, yeah, super stoked for that one. Um, so, yeah, that's it, guys. That is my uh, Winter Horror Hall Part 1. Uh, check back around in a few days for Part 2. Uh, there will be some more gems, um, you know, to, to see. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Hope you guys are having a good holiday season. Uh, you know, check back soon. I'll see you later. Peace out.